Aloha and welcome to another episode of Hawaii Food and Farmer series. I'm your co-host Justine Spiritu. This is my co-host Matthew Johnson. Thank you Think Tech Hawaii for giving us this space to talk to folks that are part of our local food system. We like to bring on farmers that are growing food, distributors that are taking it around the island, and also feature institutions that are taking a special interest and in programs that are focused on our local food system. Great, thanks Justine. And so as always, please remember that we're here every Thursday afternoon at 4 p.m. And please join the conversation. You can either tweet in at, at thinktechhi, and you can actually even call in at the number shown below. And we actually had our first caller last week and <laughs> we didn't even know what to do, so very exciting. So please, please uh, jump into the conversation. Uh, so um, with us today, we actually, a lot of times we talk to like smaller farms, but this time we actually have kind of like a, a larger, well-known uh, ranch. Um, so we have Taylor and Isis from Kula Ranch. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Thank you for, Thanks having, for us. having us. Yeah. <coughs> and even though, you know, Kula Ranch, I don't know if you guys could talk a little bit more about it, but, you know, it's been around for a very long time and it's well-known in Hawaii and Oahu and actually around the world. But really kind of some of the work that you guys are doing is, is relatively uh, new for the ranch. So that's why we wanted to hear from you guys today. So thank you for, for joining us. Oh, thanks thank for having you. us. Um, to get started, Taylor, why don't you kind of start off, just introduce yourself and uh, give us a little background. How did you get to be at Kula Ranch? Sure. So uh, again, Taylor Kellerman is my name and I uh, actually am from the windward side of Oahu. So being at the ranch is kind of a dream job, if you will. Right on. Uh, I got my start like a lot of people, backyard gardening, but then uh, ended up going to University of Hawaii at Hilo. Okay. Got my degree in tropical ag, and then worked for the pineapple industry for a very long time. Worked in vegetables as well. And then worked over and worked for the seed industry for about eight years. Mm. And then just over a year ago, got the opportunity to come back home cool. and work for the ranch. So it's been really, really cool ever since. And then what, what is your, your title? What are you doing again at Kula? My title is Director of Diversified Agriculture and Land Stewardship. Okay. So that kind of encompasses all of our diversified agriculture, our livestock, our aquaculture operations, as well as our conservation. And then just to kind of top it off, I cover the landscaping as well. Okay. So Great. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, Isis, how about you? I know that you're someone who I've known for a few years now. We always would kind of see each other at different events where I was like, hey, you know, yeah. kind of like <laughs> sort of knew each other, but not really. Yeah. So it's great to kind of um, get to know you a little bit more. And now we've been um, buying some product from you guys. So, yeah. but yeah, what, how did you get to Kula Ranch? So um, my start was, um, I was always into botany and, you know, mostly into any botanical, you know, growing um, any kind of plants and things like that when I was young. And then uh, as I got to university, um, that would seem like the only thing of interest to I was, was that. And I went to a big ag college in, in Northern California. So um, I pursued mostly uh, ornamental horticulture at that time. And so, um, but I was working on the university farm, which is about 500 acres of, of orchard crops, uh, wow. mostly like peaches, nectarines, you know, almonds, uh, a lot of nuts, walnuts. And then um, I came out here in 1992. My grandfather lived here and, and uh, just really got involved in the ornamental horticulture industry and nurseries and, and uh, did a lot of, of managing of landscape nurseries and things like that. And, and then started about um, 2008, really got involved in, in more of the um, tropical ag program of growing a lot of uh, fruit and, and vegetables. I always kind of had, had a gar backyard garden, like, like Taylor's saying, you know, and did that for myself, but wanted to do it on a, on a bigger scale. And first kind of wanted to help others learn how to do it. And so it was kind of helping other people set up their own backyard gardens and things. And then um, ended up, I had a, this golden opportunity where Kualoa was looking for someone to start their diversified ag program. And uh, I came over there and was able to, to get that job and, and have just been the best job ever since. So been there for about four years now and it's just been, been great. Right on, that sounds like a perfect job for you. Yeah, love it, yeah. Right. So maybe you can kind of talk <coughs> about, you know, if you guys are growing food, what's kind of your daily kind of activities or is it something that's just how you're using the land or is it kind of developed into programs for the employees or for the guests to kind of be a part of? Or if you can kind of explain. 
Yeah, you know, the, the thing about how, how we're set up at Kula is it's unique, but I think it's going to be a good model for Hawaii's ag future. Because mm -hmm. when you think about it, uh, you look at the cost of everything, real estate and labor and mm -hmm. everything, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough business as it is, and then you throw that and it makes it even harder. So what a lot of people have done is kind of what we're doing, which is turn to what we already have in existence, which is the visitor industry. Mm -hmm. So can you somehow, you know, mold the two together? And what I think that we've done a good job with is doing that, but still keeping a production-minded um, drive towards what we do. So in, in, in all of our agriculture and, and basically all of our food production, it's very important to us to produce a lot and to be able to feed community and be able to um, not just kind of show people and say, this is what we do, but right. in, in reality, there's not really a lot coming out of it. Yeah. So a lot of my day-to-day -day is working with uh, people like ISIS just to kind of look at how you would just a normal farm, how you would in regards to what's the most productive way to do this, what's the best way for land utilization, what's the best crops to look at, test trials, even things like that. But then kind of pulling back and seeing, okay, well, how can we incorporate this and make this interesting to our visitor industry mm -hmm. so that we can help support it economically with that side as well. So, Because that may be how Koloa is more well known is a lot of the, I guess, activities happening on the ranch so mm -hmm. um you guys have the history of uh being a lot of the, the set for a lot of hollywood movies yeah mm -hmm. like what jurassic <coughs> park king kong i think there's um, been 25 hollywood movies filming. wow yeah um and then also some of the other rides so it's neat to see how you're saying that you guys want to actually have the you know sustainable agriculture happening but not just as a hey everybody look over here there's you know, Isis the farmer and just kind of doing your farming action, but it's actually yeah. a real productive farm. And it's almost kind of like, because I know a lot of other farms are trying to figure out how to incorporate ag tourism yeah. mm -hmm. into their operations. It's almost like you guys are kind of going the other direction. Is that kind of a... It, I, I mean, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but I think a lot of it was, you know, it's always been a cattle ranch. Yeah, it's been a cattle ranch. Yeah. Since the beginning of it. So. Since 1850. So that's been kind of a mainstay. And I know throughout his, throughout the ranch's history, they've tried different ventures. So yeah. so the diversified ag model is not, model's not totally new. Mm. However, I, I think our approach to it, and, you know, ISIS is taking a, a very cool approach where, you know, I, you, know you can kind of tell them all the different things that we're doing, but all the different types of bags that are really make for a great... Uh, I would almost say like a backdrop to other things that we're trying to show our visitors, you know. Yeah. So some people come on to see movie sets or they'll yeah. come on to, to try an adventure, but then they get to go and see some of our other areas. And it's, it's a nice way to educate. It's a nice way to provide a backdrop. Mm -hmm. But then it's also a great way to um, produce food and have a viable economic model. So. Cool. Yeah. And that's always been the biggest thing for when we were doing farmers markets and things when we were out there actually selling our products that we, we, we grow or we produce um, on the ranch is <coughs> everyone really is always shocked like, oh, we didn't know you did this at the yeah. ranch. Right. We yeah. thought it was just tours or yeah. movies and, you know, things Jurassic like that. Park. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like it's great to always see that. Um, you know, new, uh, you know, attitude that people are realizing that we're actually a productive um, ranch and we're trying to even grow more and more. And that's that's really our goal is to try and, and utilize um, a lot of the areas to produce more food for the community. So, so you're looking to uh, keep expanding the amount of, <coughs> amount of land that you're growing? Yeah, things. yeah, we're, we're yeah. continually expanding, yeah. And you guys have like, a, it's a cool little grown brand is that the brand that you're using so it, it's kind of a new approach where you know we have our oysters and our in, in shrimp we do pacific white shrimp we have isis's which, uh, which is things like vegetables orchard crops potted ornamentals cut flowers things like that then you've got our livestock mm. um, and while they're all important to our overall business plan they've mm. all kind of come up independently mm. okay. so we tried to look at okay what's a well-rounded way where we can just take everything we do oh. and make it recognizable by one brand yeah. so we kind of rolled it out during the farm fair and it seemed to be you know received well but to ice's point you know it's every time somebody came up to our booth and said oh i didn't know you guys did all this yeah, yeah. Like, yes. <coughs> okay we reached another person so uh, yeah and it seemed to hear that all these things kind of happened independently and then it, now you have a really neat suite of different products that are available because obviously mm -hmm. the, the beef so you guys are you have the the hamburgers that are available mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. at the ranch 
Um, can you get the beef? Like, can you get it anywhere else outside of the ranch right now? So right now, we harvest uh, eight animals a month, and you know the the burgers at the ranch are all our grass-fed beef. You know, it's it's, uh, um, and we also do prime cuts. You know, your normal steaks that are available mm -hmm. off out of our visitor center. You can order them online. We don't deliver, but you can you know order them, and then you can come pick them up. Mm -hmm. and that just kind of ensures your order. But recently, uh, Paniolo's Cafe mm -hmm. in um, Kailua, they carry our beef. Uh -huh. uh, and then most recently, uh, Isis has been doing a great job with our, our laying hens. So we have mm -hmm. a cool little local moco at Moki's uh, Bread and Breakfast oh, wow. in Kailua. So it's, uh, it's one of our uh, grass-fed beef patties with a uh, cool little farm fresh egg. So. Nice. Yeah. And you guys have your own <coughs> cafe on site? As we do. Right now, the only thing that, you know, we do a fairly robust number of people through there mm -hmm. so keeping up with the quantity is the toughest thing so mm -hmm. right now uh the burgers and um are the main things that we sell out of the cafe that could be linked directly mm -hmm. back to they do myself. sometimes they'll do specials with our shrimp or right. you know other, okay. other products yeah. but but majority it's just the the grass-fed the burgers that's what mm -hmm. we're doing Isaac, can you talk a little bit about the, the, the part that you're doing, like the different types of stuff that you're growing, yeah. how many acres you guys on? Because you've been there four years now. Four years. So and Was there this kind of growing happening before you? I think you said before No, this there was, was, when I first started there, there was, it was almost like a, um, an area where it's kind of like a botanical garden where we had maybe about 20 different types of, of fruit, tropical fruit trees there, um, a great variety of things that um, were more for for show than production. Mm -hmm. And so we've been kind of turning it more to production with those. And then um, I kind of, when I first started, I contacted a lot of chefs and just said, you know, what do you guys need mm -hmm. that other farmers aren't growing? You know, and what can we kind of work on? And so I was kind of in a position where I could kind of experiment with different types of crops to see what we could grow here what would work and um, and then fulfill that that niche that you know wasn't being met at the time and so of course all the chefs gave me long lists of things saying yeah, yeah. can you grow this you know so um, so that's where kind of we were doing a lot with our heirloom vegetables and things like that where um, we've had some good success with with those things like heirloom um, okra and eggplant and then we've done a variety of different like you know carrots and and radishes and beets and you know just a uh, uh, beans and so we do we just kind of try and always trying different things we even did artichoke that came out successful too and artichoke and people are telling me you can not grow artichoke here and, mm -hmm. and it, it did well so you know wow. it's like um, yeah so it's been it's been really fun doing that and then we've also started doing some of the more traditional um, orchard crops like papaya and, and apple banana and those those types of things um, things that we kind of needed for the ranch as well as um, you know there is a market still for those things you know mm -hmm. that I found um, and and that's kind of where we we really um, branched out our on our diversification of the ag mm -hmm. and then we also have a three acre shade house that um, it used to be um, an orchid uh, farm that that was kind of subleased to um, some farmers at that time and and so they have since retired and so the the, the shade house has come back to us and so mm -hmm. in there I've been doing some ornamentals like bromeliads, anthuriums, some orchids um, and then we also um, kind of diverted some of the area to doing some crops inside there that were like we start a lot of our our um, we do our prepping um, areas where we start a lot of our seed there and then take it out and plant down the field as well we started uh, about almost two acres of cacao inside there as well so and it's doing really well so and we, we've got new areas we're constantly trying to do different things and and one of the areas we have ava we're doing a lot of ava in there mm. too and and uh, you know, we're trying to really um, do a lot more with traditional crops. Um, so we're doing a lot of ulu right now, kalo, um, and and a lot of uh, you know banana, and just trying to. We, we you know, I've been really involved with the Breadfruit Institute in Kauai, and doing uh, uh, ulu distributions, <clears throat> and those um, have been really successful. Where we're giving out ulu trees to the community and things. So. So it's been really enjoyable. Right. Awesome. awesome. It's cool to, to see or hear about the two different angles, you know, food production to sell to the community as well as then taking a, this kind of <laughs> mission of specific crops. So we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to get right back to it. 
For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We are uh, here live on Mondays at 3 p.m. and we bring guests like our best health coach, Elena Maganto. Uh, eat well and follow her tips. Viva la comida saludable. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what's likable about science. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, Hawaii's leading digital media platform for civic engagement, raising public awareness on tech, energy diversification, and globalism. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Aloha, I'm Chantal Seville, the host of the Savvy Chick Show. You can watch the show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Honolulu time and enjoy how to be inspired and empowered. If you're a woman or girl, everyone is welcome, but it's really dedicated to you. And we look forward to seeing you. You can also find us on thinktechhawaii.com. See you soon. Aloha. Aloha, welcome back to Hawaii Food and Farmer Series. Uh, we're here every day, every Thursday at 4 p.m. I'm your co-host, Justine Spiritu. And I'm your co-host, Matthew Johnson. And as always, you can join the conversation through Twitter at, at ThinkTechHI. And you can also call in on the hotline, uh, the number shown below. Great. Uh, so today we're talking to Taylor and Isis from Kula Ranch. And I was just saying during the break, we didn't actually give you guys an opportunity to give a little bit of the history of Kula Ranch. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, so Kula Ranch, uh, I would say, started with Garrett P. Judd, who is very famous in Hawaiian history because he was the first one to create a medical journal in uh, the Hawaiian language. Oh, wow. So he became befriended very quickly and, and was you know, a confidant and an advisor to uh, the monarchy at that time. Mm. And, uh, you know, Kula Ranch is actually three different valleys, uh, or Aupua, so you've got Hakipu Kula, which we're most famous for, mm. and Kaaba, which mm. is where all the movies tend to be filmed. Okay. Um, and while Kula was the first acquisition, the other two valleys came in the next generation of Judds. Okay. And now the whole place is run by, or owned by the Morgan family. Okay. Um, John Morgan being the uh, president mm. and CEO, and he, you know, he is the, the neat, the neat part about John is that he's created this empire, if you will, of, <laughs> okay. of you know, of, uh, of visitor industry, yet <clears throat> totally dedicated to agriculture. In mm. fact, most of the meetings that I have with him are around when are we going to open up new areas, when are we going to try these new okay. things. Yeah. So it's uh, the opportunities that we get to, to just try things, um, yeah. I think wouldn't exist otherwise unless yeah. you had such a supportive uh, management. Yeah, it's amazing you're saying you're able to trial artichoke. I'm sure most places would be like, we're not trying that because right. that's not mm. a crop that seems viable, viable. for exactly. Hawaii. But yeah. And here you go saying you had success with it. So right. that, that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it seems like such a great spot for you guys to have that freedom to really go out and, and try different things and see what you can do. It's fantastic. Yeah. So then you said the department that you guys are working for is relatively new. Does that <clears> kind of <throat> represent more of a, that push to, to move along faster in that direction of it, producing things it and does. It, more food. It's kind of like a new spin on an old uh, initiative where ag's always been key mm -hmm. ranching wise. So the cattle is really, it's just evolved from uh, really now we're a grass fed beef operation, which, you know, before more of a cow cow sort of situation like mm -hmm. other places. Uh, aquaculture, everybody knows our oysters. The oysters are grown in the 800 year old fish pond. So and this is the only place in Hawaii that's growing oysters, is that correct? No, or there? there's others that grow oysters. Um, we are the only place certified. on Oahu that's certified to retail them. Oh, okay. Yeah, oysters being a, a raw product, it, it requires a certain amount of uh, due diligence with the Department of Health and everything okay. like that, understandably so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, and then you look at that, and then you look at, uh, you know, when you look at Isis and all, of, and all of his, I think the drive to have diversified ag was always there, but the level that he's taking it to and all the different crops that we're doing, that's yeah. that's definitely uh, um, a new initiative. So think of it as kind of like old ideals, but with a new driver, a new spin, yeah. I well, guess. We need the right, the right team in place to be able to do it as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and we kind of mentioned <coughs> briefly about ag tourism, because a lot of the other farms that we've had before we were um, on the show and worked with as well, they're trying to figure out how to incorporate ag tourism into their operations. Yeah. Um, I know like Cuckoo Farms, um, Kylie was one right. of the first, probably smaller family size farm to really kind of figure out all the red tape and kind of get mm -hmm. their cafe up and going. Um, is that something, are you guys a, a resource for small farms? And is that some of the conversations you have with some of the other farmers in the community of different things that, that they can do? 
Yeah, I always encourage, you know, um, other small farms to try and incorporate that into their model, you know, and it's, it's something that can really help add to their revenue to become successful here is to, to bring people onto the farm and, and do some kind of tourism, whether it's, it's workshops or just having, you know, schools come, like the way how um, Kahuku Farms really, they really hit that market with the schools coming in. Yeah. And it's really, it's a great thing for, to educate others where the food actually comes from. So, yeah, it's something that, you know, we, you know, personally try and, and encourage others to, to do that, that same thing. So it's, it's, it's something, you know, mm -hmm. I feel. Yeah, we actually I look to Kylie a lot because the way that they have their operation there with a the cafe is just amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the way yeah. they've set it up. And then, you know, we have a lot of scenarios that we're running over in our heads of how can we expand our offerings? How can we mm -hmm. continue the model that we got going? And they're, they're a great inspiration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do a great job. So, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, well, it seems like you guys are doing a lot already. So what is kind of the longer vision or how do you see it still evolving or, or growing just more more land and more finding more markets for your products or still experimenting with adding on new products you, you know I, I would say I, I'm gonna give the practical approach and then you can give the approach that you think <laughs> is realistic because that, that's where that's where we work, work well together so I go how about this and he goes mm. <laughs> Uh, you, know, I, you know, you look at what we do, I look at it as like a three siloed approach, right? We create products for people to uh, consume. That's, mm. that's a main goal for it. You know, we want to feed community. That's one. Um, also, we also act as a backdrop for a, a larger business, which we've talked about earlier, which is the, agri the agritourism portion. Um, but we also do a lot for um, what we like to call brand recognition. So when you look at our oysters, when you look at our grass-fed beef, when you look at these things that are specific to Kualoa, you know, mm -hmm. Isis grows a terrific apple banana. Mm -hmm. You know, the trick is how do we get people to go, oh, you know, Kualoa's bananas are unreal, just like they do with our oysters and, mm -hmm. our, and our beef and, and other things. So that what we're trying to figure out is, What's, you know, what's the next thing? You know, you've got the cacao going, which I know has a lot of potential, <coughs> but it's long range, right, right. you know. Right. So trying to like thing. pick your, your next kind of like niche product. Yeah, and the, and the unique thing about Kualoa is that we have all these different things, you know, with the, with the livestock, with the aquaculture, mm -hmm. and then the diversified ag, that, um, you know, I really see us kind of going more to a direct, you know, f um, farm to table kind mm, of approach where absolutely. we can offer majority of what you're eating is is grown right there at the ranch yeah. and so kind of going in that direction that's that's a real important direction i think that we're we're headed towards as well that's not something that happens already with the events that i mean you, i know there's like a lot of weddings that take place there is there mm. that catering option well yet? we do have some events like um the outstanding in the field has been there yeah. um annually for the last thing like, three three years three they've years been doing now. that and that's been a great event, and so we're trying to what, do more. What, what is that? Outstanding in the field. That's a national um, event that goes all around the country, where it's a, it's an outside company. It's not part of Kualoa, and they just come to different farms and they set up and they take a local chef from the area, and then that chef will try and take as much um, product from the farm itself or from the close within, like the Ahupua'a, and and serve everything from there. So, um, Gooch has been the main chef, been mm -hmm. doing it for us, and I think. Um, Andrew. Picking they the did lady, last yeah. year. Oh, yeah. they did last they did, year. I think yeah. they just did that at Small Kind Farm, right? Um, it's Which similar. This is like a different. It's a yeah, it's different. A same idea, but different. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And I think they did at Kahumana maybe um, mm. one time because they do it usually here and then they do it on the west side as mm. well when, when okay. they're in Hawaii. Yeah. But if you go to Outstanding in the Field, you can see they're all over the country. They travel all over and do this. Oh, okay. So yeah. yeah. But you know, we we're lucky where we have uh, beauty and yeah. resource. So. Yeah. You know, his point is, is right on the money where it's, it's if we can look at how we, we can invite people in to not only enjoy our products, but enjoy them at that location. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, you know, everybody talks about how the chefs are the new rock stars, and I'm a firm believer of that. So yeah, yeah. finding that, because, you know, when you look at the traditional ag model, it's, it's, it's a tough, tough run in a way, for sure. So I think that, you know, moving forward, how do we as a state look towards those different avenues and vertically integrate in that sense? So. 
So, Ted, one thing you, you mentioned that maybe doesn't get as much uh, notice is the conservation work that you mm -hmm. that you do on the ranch, and that kind of falls under your department as well. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that, like what, sure. what that all entails? Yeah, so the ranch itself is 4,000 acres total. Wow. And when you consider our pasture land, we're uh, about 1,500 acres. And when you consider ag developed in other areas, you're looking at about 150 or so. So okay. that's a lot of area that's just left in what we call rain shed. Mm -hmm. So in order to uh, conduct rain shed management, which includes things like uh, stream restorations, um, uh, native species outplanting, your, uh, invasive species eradication, as well as uh, kind of maintaining important cultural areas, mm -hmm. we employ four people dedicated just to that. We call them our stewardship employees. Wow. And it's, uh, it's a neat situation, and I, I always throw this out there as a promotion because it's, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. They're completely paid for by the ranch. So that's four employees without any sort of assistance from any sort of government body that is just to maintain the environment from what it is. Wow. But when you consider that we farm in the uplands, midlands, and then we do aquaculture yeah. on the ocean, it's mm -hmm. within it's in our best interest yeah. to be good stewards and to, to manage our resources properly. So it's a big job, you know, yeah. there's a lot to it, a lot of moving parts, but it's also one of those things that I mean, just to think that you know we get to participate in mm -hmm. the management of that whole area yeah, is just trying to preserve pretty and cool. Keep that natural yeah. beauty. It's, it's yeah. three entire valleys, I hope. Yeah, I mean, that's a massive yeah. uh, endeavor. Yep, definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we're out of time. That wraps that up. So thank you so much for coming on, and it's great to kind of hear about this fixture that's on the island and learn what you guys are kind of doing in, in food production and, and land conservation up there. So thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. So, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.